Welcome to the Tentry Intelligent Infrastructure webcast. I'm Clay Ryder. In this webcast, we will explore how intelligent infrastructure can save you up to 95% of your administrative time. Today, we will hear from two guests, offer some additional resources for your benefit, and have an open Q&A session at the end. If you'd like to ask your question during the presentation, please open the Q&A panel on the bottom of your screen and enter it there, and we'll queue it up for discussion later in the program. Without further delay, I'd like to welcome our first guest, Erwin Dari, out of the webcast. Welcome, Erwin. Thanks for having me, Clay. Thank you for being here today. Please tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Erwin Dari. I'm a field CTO here at Tintry. And I think the uh, most interesting point is I spent 22 years in the technology space, the first 16 in IT, uh, helping various companies uh, size and scale rapidly under tight operational constraints. So those challenges led me to virtualization pretty early on and eventually led me to Tintry as a customer in 2012. Next, I'd like to introduce Mario Blandini. Thanks, Clay. Hi, everybody. My name is Mario Blandini. I'm an evangelist with Tintry, and I'll start off by launching a quick poll just to get a sense of who you are, and we can best model our discussion around your vote. So the polling is up for you, and we'll let it uh, hang out here for just another second. We see a lot of folks that are choosing the other title, um, which is fine. I think that's indicative of, uh, as we share the results here, uh, the reality that most of us in IT have lots of different jobs. So uh, it looks like we're bending toward the technical side here. But our hope is that this content will have a little bit for everybody uh, that you can get benefit out of it. Back to you, Clay. Thank you, Mario. One challenge faced by data centers is the ever-growing demand for IT services, which after all are essential for business success. At the same time, scaling to meet this demand is crippling IT organizations as the expense and availability of trained IT staff far exceeds the need. Erwin, given this reality, why do we need intelligence in the data center? Well, Clay, uh, multiple data points suggest that organizations are deploying more and more infrastructure in support of those business initiatives that you had mentioned. But the teams that administer these systems are not growing. And so historically, we've been told that automation and orchestration is a pretty big key to closing this gap. But even then, expertise required to develop these solutions is in pretty short supply. So that just results in this, this gap even widening even further. So this is where we believe artificial intelligence in the form of both AI ops and intelligent infrastructure can help close that gap. Well, that's interesting. You know, this, the reality is that we're based on constraints that we cannot grow ourselves out of. Given that we still need to deliver IT services, what are the choices? Well, technology vendors and, and the analyst community alike are, are recommending technologies like intelligent infrastructure to resolve this friction between the pressure of delivering these services quickly and then also simultaneously lowering the level of expertise required to manage these systems day to day. Many of these capabilities are not new per se, but new challenges require a fresh and different approach and, and many, many times things that you might not have considered in the past. So what you're saying, to some degree at least, is folks need to think outside of the box and perhaps consider options they may not have previously embraced. What are some of the common approaches today and, and what might be a different choice? And what are the pros and cons of each? Sure. So in our space, which is enterprise storage, the common approach is uh, histor historically been to stick with LUNs and volumes even though those constructs haven't represented the atomic unit of measurement in the data center for maybe 15 years or so. 90% of applications are deployed as virtual machines today. And this fundamental mismatch between VMs and the LUNs and volumes that they're stored in result in a lot of operational overhead for many organizations. And so anybody that's on the call that's been tagged on a, a storage performance escalation uh, in a virtualized environment, they know what I'm talking about. And con conventional wisdom has always been to just make those same old runs uh, faster with flash, et cetera. Well, I guess that's understandable since people tend to go with what they know, especially if they believe it's working for them. You know, after all the results and experience are known and can be planned around accordingly. However, in many cases, you know, it, it's true that what might be seen as working is, you know, in fact, less than optimum. You know, what's a different approach to solving this challenge or what could provide a, a different experience? 
Great question. So with VM Store, uh, our flagship intelligent infrastructure system, it starts with an all flash base, but builds on that by deprecating runs and volumes as the unit of measurement. And we support VMs as first class citizens. We then set all of our intelligence to benchmark all IOs at one millisecond of latency or less. We then actively analyze and model the workload characteristics of each VM independently. And we, in real time, we create resource lanes for those VMs. This isolates all VMs from each other, uh, which is key to solving the noisy neighbor problem. And then this analysis and real time learning allows the VM source system to self optimize those resource lanes even as the workload characteristics change. Ultimately, this allows organizations to virtualize any application regardless of IO requirements and even mix and match VMs on the same system where conventional systems will require silos, uh, like in use cases such as VDI or, or, or things like DevOps pipelines. Well, interesting. It, it, it seems that uh, in an intelligent infrastructure, you, you would have a, a simpler uh, management experience because so, so much of this seems to be automated and taken care of uh, from design and that would re reduce the administrative overhead considerably. You know, what are other benefits organizations could expect from leveraging intelligent infrastructure? So Clay, you're exactly right. And this approach, VM level everything, not only extends to things like data management, like snapshots and replication, and even higher level concepts like API driven automation, but also to predictive analytics. So customers who leverage VM store as their storage platform can access VM level data for free via their portal on analytics.tintree.com to do things like simulate deployments, uh, simulate hardware refreshes or any changes to applications. And they can do that all predictively and very easily. And uh, I like to share with customers, you don't need what I used to call a PhD in storage architecture anymore to do these kinds of exercises. Would you share with us some real life examples of how intelligent infrastructure has altered the delivery of IT services? Yeah. So uh, we got a couple of pointing examples here because they mirror my personal experience as a customer in the past. Uh, the first uh, is a customer sharing the fact that the advances that we've made and the ones that I've described today, that even after four years as a customer, no one else has been able to accomplish anything similar. And also, they're experiencing our core ethos, which is VM store is storage for people who have better things to do than to administer storage. The second one uh, also mirrors my, my personal experience. And this is an organization that was able to cancel their managed services contract for their storage environment by migrating all of their virtual machines to VM store. Both of these organizations uh, are reducing their time uh, in terms of management. And uh, these are highly dynamic environments. And even though they're dynamic, they're reducing their administrative overhead by as much as 95%. Well, it sure sounds like these customers have experienced a different result from what they were accustomed. What are a couple of the ways that uh, Tentry's intelligent infrastructure has fundamentally changed user expectations? Well, that's another great point. Uh, so these anecdotes, uh, they really get me excited. The first uh, is a customer whose name I can't share, but uh, they're a Fortune 3 company, so that narrows the band quite a bit. Uh, they're a big VMs for customer, and the quote kind of speaks for itself. Uh, everything in the data center should work this way. No one should be using specialists to manage their infrastructure anymore. Again, very uh, closely related to our, our, our ethos is. And the second uh, is a customer, uh, again, in the Fortune 1000 that built a private DevOps cloud to support hundreds of developers. And you can imagine how hard that might be on the storage environment. Uh, this customer uh, has come to expect uh, the fact that the, you know, the infrastructure can run itself in these highly dynamic environments as the environment changes that the system should be able to respond to that in real time without human intervention. Well, thanks for sharing some of these customer experiences and, and highlighting the difference between standard infrastructure and intelligent infrastructure. For those who'd like to learn more, what would you recommend? Well, the fastest way and easiest way is to uh, go to, to explore.tentry.com. There you'll find a library of operations that we can simulate and give you a taste of what the VM store experience is like. Uh, second, uh, we're very happy to perform live demos. I think with the current situation here, um, those demos are gonna be mostly over conferencing technology like Zoom, uh, but we have live environments uh, in our labs that we can walk customers through a, a number of scenarios in real time. Uh, and we're also uh, loading up on uh, blog content. We've already published a little bit of it, but we have a lot more to publish over the coming weeks and also for the rest of this year. Um, and then if, you, if you're a Gartner subscriber, 
um, please don't forget to check out Phil Dawson's research on intelligent infrastructure. Um, you, you'll have access to these uh, to these research notes as well. Uh, for you, Erwin, a question from uh, Saeed. He asks, how is VM Store competitive with HCI, specifically in terms of performance and scaling? Yeah, that's actually a really great question. So HCI uh, was invented uh, in response to kind of the same type of problem, which is performance for virtual machines and setting up the storage for virtual machines was really, really hard. Uh, the challenges with, with HCI from an architectural uh, perspective is that the storage and the compute are tightly bound together and scaling has to happen in some measure all together, compute and storage all at the same time, adding nodes, et cetera. There, uh, but again, that doesn't necessarily resolve the problem. You, what you'll start to find is that uh, vendors like HPE uh, and, and Nutanix, et cetera, are supporting things like DHCI, disaggregated HCI, which is adding a, a, an explicit storage array um, to your HCI cluster as a means to scale the storage separately from the compute. And we work very much uh, in that same model. So the power of VM store is that the storage can be added to any virtualized environment, whether that be HCI or uh, integrated system like a, like a converged system. Uh, and you gain all the benefit of all the things that I've said, and you get to scale the storage independently. So the, the arrays themselves can scale up from a capacity standpoint. And um, I, would, I would encourage you to take a look at uh, a live demo of our federated pool technology, which allows multiple VM store uh, appliances to pool together and then intelligently shuffle workloads around based on uh, the work workload characteristics. The very different value proposition than HCI. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Erwin. I'll take the next question and I'll let uh, both Clay and uh, Erwin add on. A question from Jim. How does this compare to Tegile or what uh, we affectionately refer to within the Tintry family of brands, our IntelliFlash product line? And um, the question is whether or not they will remain separate or uh, have some bleed over in the future. And the answer to that, Jim, is that uh, we have, since uh, the acquisition was completed, even before then, uh, indicated that Tintry's strategy is to not integrate things on an OS level or a platform level, but bring analytics uh, as a layer above the physical appliances and allow that integration to happen at the analytics layer. Uh, today, many of these capabilities and a lot of the ones specifically described by Erwin are uh, specific to our VM store product line, but there are capabilities within uh, the uh, IntelliFlash product line, uh, whether it be IntelliCare and the uh, data that is provided there and the analytics that are provided there. Uh, we, you can look forward to hearing more from us at Tintry uh, throughout the years. We announce uh, future products and how we will uh, be able to integrate that at the analytics layer. But, but for now, both technologies do solve many of the same challenges. They are in fact, storage array is largely flash based. And one of the benefits of seeing a demonstration is we would love to show you the pros and cons of each and naturally provide whichever choice you feel is best for your environment. Do you have any other comments on that, Erwin, in terms of uh, those technologies and how people should think of them when building up the data center? Yeah. So I think you're exactly right that analytics is going to help tie the two technologies uh, together. Um, when you're when you're making a decision, and again, this is my personal perspective. Obviously, take this uh, however you like. Um, when we when we talk about intelligence and applying intelligence to various constructs in the data center, it matters uh, how granular you you get the data, right? So, in in use cases where you are supporting uh, uh, LUNs or volumes, and the LUN or volume is the appropriate granularity, then it makes sense to use a technology like Intellify. So I think of things like high performance OLTP type workloads that might be virtualized uh, or physical. Um, and in that case, it's, it's very easy to construct boundaries by which you can define the performance and analytical requirements. If that LUN or volume has VMs inside of it and you really wanna be able to optimize against a mixture of, of those things, but the LUN does not give you that intelligence, then VM store is a more appropriate uh, technology. And again, the overall goal is to dramatically lower the total operational overhead. So in, in our case, with, with the entire Tintry portfolio, use the right tool for the right job. And then even if those systems are not 
integrated from a physical standpoint, we're not taking InfiniBand connections and tying the two things together, uh, the overall uh, overhead will go down because they'll be the right tool uh, being used for the right purpose. Yeah, I think it's fair to say then, Erwin, that uh, one of the ways to distinguish IntelliFlash from the VM store product line would be that IntelliFlash has uh, a variety of choices in terms of the physical interface where VM store systems have uh, Ethernet only, so to speak. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I like to use kind of analogies from outside of the technology space. And so I say things like, you know, uh, autonomous vehicles are are going to be very meaningful, I think, to the future of, of, of transportation. But it's not for everybody. There are people that still love, you know, turning the wheel and pressing the brake and, and pressing the, uh, the gas. And if that's the case, you still want intelligence, right? You still want technologies like GPS and the automotive uh, kind of uh, pantheon. Uh, and that's where IntelliFlash um, makes a lot of sense. Uh, the IntelliCare uh, analytics and soon to merge with a, a unified analytics engine uh, gives those people that are more comfortable, want that that flexibility of, of having multiple physical interfaces, um, still being able to, to get some intelligence from the, the LUN based architecture. But if you're highly virtualized, you're supporting private cloud, maybe you're doing VDI where you can't tell what the users are doing, you can't tell ahead of time and you can't you can't you don't want to be responsive you don't want to uh, architect the solution and then either over provision or or get it wrong um, if those virtualized environments are highly dynamic then vm store is the more appropriate technology for that very good hey uh, another question for you uh that came in erwin is around implementation and configuration because automation can be complicated how much effort does it really take to implement a vm store and get the capabilities that you described around intelligent infrastructure so that, that's a great point and that's a great question. So um, with intelligent infrastructure, I wanna be very clear to the people that are listening. Uh, intelligence is derived from being able to react to telemetry in real time. And what that means is from an implement, implementation standpoint is VM store is very easy to implement. And actually, um, I, I like to tell customers that we actually don't offer professional services. Uh, most of our customers will deploy uh, VM store appliances without any help from anybody. And the reason why they can do that is because the system goes in um, and it learns about the environment in real time and then it self optimizes. So you don't have to worry about configuring policies or uh, figuring out what your pools are doing uh, because the VM store is, is designed to do those things in real time. And uh, you mentioned the explore.tentry.com is a great place to go to see exactly what that experience is like uh, because uh, it is really simple. I think that's one of the things that all vendors say, Clay. Everybody claimed the exact same simplicity and ease of use. I mean, who wouldn't, right? But um, the intelligent infrastructure is different than standard infrastructure in that regard, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, for one thing, the degree of intelligence, you know, is always something that can be measured, you know, from one's own perspective. But, but keep in mind that the kind of intelligence that we're discussing about here is something we've been working on for over a decade. This isn't just a, a new witty uh, you know, marketing slogan, but in fact, it, it's uh, systematic and part of the design of these systems. So when, when we talk about intelligence, it's really understanding things from the atomic level up and being able to use that data to then suggest ways in which things can be operationally more efficient. Uh, and ultimately, you make the best decisions when you have the best data. And that's an, an incredibly important part of, of intelligent infrastructure. Yeah, I also like to think self-service is an important part of that. And so one of the things that you mentioned, Erwin, is that people save time. Is that exclusively just for the infrastructure admin? Because oftentimes in larger organizations, there's different humans <laughs> that do the infrastructure piece compared to virtual machines, to compared to virtual desktops, databases, et cetera. Uh, what really then is the day in the life using intelligent infrastructure versus standard for both of those folks, specifically the person that deploys it responsible for the capacity, and then the person who's actually running the applications on the infrastructure. Yeah, so uh, the benefits are, are multifold across a number of different areas in, in the business. So um, for the traditional, if folks are still structured kind of in that traditional siloed model where you've got discrete kind of virtual teams and storage teams, uh, VM store can be managed by either one of those teams. Uh, storage teams typically love the VM store technology because it's, it's hands off, 
Um, it, it has robust uh, analytics that we've mentioned before. So, you know, they can pull together some really robust uh, predictive analytics and then, you know, present that back to the management team very easily without having to run a bunch of snippers or, or log collection devices, et cetera. Um, and it allows them to focus more time on, on maybe the, the, the higher touch uh, aspects of their, of their infrastructure. On the virtualization side, uh, virtualization admins can also manage VM store. We, we have a number of scenarios where customers, uh, the VM store admins just take, they just take the responsibility of managing VM store separately from the storage team. And they love it because uh, all of the nomenclature, all of the handles are the, exactly the same. So when you go to vCenter, you do an API call and you ask for a VM name, you could do the same API call to VM store, get an, a VM name, and it's the exact same VM name. So when you do things like replication, or setting QoS policies. Um, the VM is the handle that we use to do that. And then beyond that, we have customers that even um, as the infrastructure team gets to, gets used to implementing intelligent infrastructure like VM store, they implement even uh, forward facing uh, functions. So let's say you're a DBA or an application admin and you're just consuming services from infrastructure, uh, they can build uh, workflows and tools that allow those application uh, admin administrators to even manage their own data management um, or, or even QoS. So uh, maybe an application admin who is not in the infrastructure team per se, um, could have a very easy handle for setting their own QoS, making sure that their, their snapshots are taken. Um, and then that can happen independently of the infrastructure team. So uh, again, freeing up time across a number of different areas. Yeah, that's the kind of self-service stuff. Uh, we talked about Gartner's definition of uh, intelligent infrastructure, and there's some research out there, but that idea that not only does the infrastructure learn and use that learning to do uh, valuable things with it, that's part of saving 95% of the time isn't exclusive to the infrastructure team. I think a lot of the, uh, the database and applications and VM folks that uh, we've had a chance to talk to also sing those praises because you're not waiting on a trouble ticket to be resolved to give me a line or do this to a line or do that to a line. It's uh, really self-service. And I think that's one of the reasons why you're such a passionate evangelist because you, you yourself have lived that life. Yes. That's right. That's right. And uh, very early on. And so uh, I've been very proud to kind of see the technology not only evolve from where it started in 2011 when, when it became available on the market, but the things that we've added to it have just been mind blowing from my perspective. All right. Hey, a, a technical question for the folks out there, Erwin. Um, what type of data does Tintry store outside of the private data center environment that we use for analytics? Yeah, so I mean, it's a long, uh, that's a long answer, but I'll try to keep it concise. So uh, we store things like VM name and then the relationship of the VM name to the files that are on the file system. Um, so that's all metadata that we use uh, in conjunction with things like uh, one minute, uh, 10 second, one minute and 10 minute samples for uh, I think something like 35 or 40 data points per VM. So th that type of data is what we use um, uh, in real time to, to do all that tuning. But then we also use that data for the predictive analytics. So we understand uh, to the minute how VMs are, are living on that infrastructure. And so if you want to do an exercise, like again, simulate the deployment of an application that you already uh, run, uh, we, can, we can simulate that on your existing infrastructure uh, without you having to run any tests or do POCs or, or do a long-term like test plan or anything like that. Uh, we, can, we can show you that real time. Questions keep rolling in. Uh, it seems that uh, scripting uh, and intelligence kind of do the same thing. So what, what makes intelligent infrastructure different than scripting? And hey, all, all of us IT folks have been uh, doing our best to script for a long time. Intelligence is different in a, in a different way. Maybe you can give your thoughts on that, Erwin. Yeah, I think the easiest way to probably characterize the difference between the two is that, that scripting is typically static. So we set a number of thresholds and a number of parameters on which we to make you know certain decisions. So a lot of if this, then that. And so you have to define this before you define that. Uh, and intelligence um, and fully autonomous operation is very dynamic, meaning that the criteria can change and the system will learn how to best adjust to those changes. And so again, what I described before um, are, are two patented technologies. We, we developed these things over a decade ago. It's the ability to model the workload characteristics of every VM using a, a conjunction of various data that we pull from not only the environment, but the file system itself. And then to understand the relationship between that workload and the compute resources that we have inside the appliance. And so because we understand those two things, 
those two things can change, meaning that um, the workload can change and the VM store will, will self-optimize, or you can actually change the, the, the hardware underneath the, the, the appliance. You can upgrade from hybrid to all flash to the next generation devices, and we can even make sure that the workload that lived on one device will properly fit and, and react the same way uh, on a new device. Th these are the kinds of things that are very different when we talk about intelligence versus just plain if this then that or rules-based automation. All right, I'll, uh, I forgot to answer this up front. Uh, folks always ask, where can we find the slides after today's presentation? You can look forward to us at Tintry following up with you to provide the slides as well as a recap of those suggested resources that were on uh, the previous slide. So you can do more research and find out more depending on uh, things that might help your environment. So we look forward to supporting you that way. And as mentioned, uh, if you wanted to have a live demonstration we're always welcome to uh, to support that. Last question for you, Erwin, because we're running up against it. Uh, the Tintree is raw storage. Uh, I think everyone uh, has an understanding that, like most storage, it's formatted. Uh, but the question as asked is, can we use Tintree as raw storage without a hypervisor? Or for physical servers, maybe that's the best way to, to translate that question. So I, I don't want to overcomplicate the answer. I think there are there are two thoughts I have in mind. Uh, one is, can we use Tintree VM store for unstructured data in the same way that we would use like a filer um, for unstructured data? And the answer to that, um, there's two answers to that. The first answer is no, the VM store itself, um, while it mounts via NFS or SMB, a, a file level protocol, it is optimized for the kinds of things that we do for virtual machines and not for unstructured data like that. Um, but the second answer to build on top of that is that we have an, a, an Accenta store virtual uh, server appliance, which you can run on top of, of, uh, of uh, the VM store, which allows you to virtually offer uh, a filer um, as a service on top of VM store. Now, I know they said without a hypervisor, but that's the way that, that uh, you would run filer services on VM store using the Accenta store VSA. Uh, the second uh, thought that I have in mind is if it's not a filer, is it, uh, we do, uh, we are now very soon going to GA uh, the support for physical Microsoft SQL databases. So all the things that I, I, I discussed today or described today in terms of real-time modeling, real-time performance uh, isolation and, and analysis uh, for uh, physical servers that are running uh, Microsoft SQL databases over an SMB share, we will support uh, very soon in Q2. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Erwin. I would uh, highlight that we did uh, tech preview that technology at uh, VMworld 2019, as well as the SQL Pass event uh, in Q4 of last year. And uh, current Tintry VM Store customers can get access to that tech preview code and begin to see what that's like. We can show you demonstrations as well, real time. And uh, to that point, it will be uh, launching soon. So if you have uh, the idea of providing self-service to database users, DBAs, or you want to, as an infrastructure admin, see the granularity there. In our architecture, or when a database is no different than a, a virtual machine versus a virtual desktop versus a container, right? Yeah, it turns out if you build something that is uh, predicated on the idea that it can understand the file level uh, traffic and then model performance response to that, um, that, that there's actually a much broader use case than just uh, virtual machines. But uh, Microsoft SQL Database is our first um, kind of expansion beyond that. And I think I'm very excited to see what we do uh, beyond even that. Great. Uh, last question. Uh, this one's probably better for you, Clay. Um, what other topics are, are planned for future webcasts? Naturally, we invite everybody who's on this call to, to join again, but some uh, folks are wondering if we have some topics lined up. Well, indeed we do. Up, upcoming topics for our Intelligent Infrastructure webcast series will include virtual desktop infrastructure, and that's our next one, uh, protecting against ransomware, SQL integrated storage, and proactively using analytics, along with many others as we think them up. I want to thank everyone for your questions. Our time together has come to a close, and I'd like to thank today's guests, Erwin Daria, field CTO for Tentry. Thanks for having me. And Mario Blandini, our chief evangelist. Uh, it was great being here. 
as well as all of you in the audience. Thanks for participating. Remember to check out the other resources we've discussed, and if you have any further questions, please contact your local Tentry representative. Be sure to join us next time when Rob Girard will talk about intelligent infrastructure for VDI. For all of us at Tentry, I'm Clay Ryder. I hope you found this time to be well spent.